I would like to express my high respect to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum for having taken the initiative for creating such an important global platform for governments shaping the future. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens because in the coming generations we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. Now why is data so important? It's important because we've reached the point when we can hack not just computers, we can hack human beings and other organisms. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. They want to wipe us off the map. We want to be part of that army that runs upon the city and runs upon the walls. You don't get there. You don't get there by working for Babylon. Hello and welcome American Levitical Kingdom privateers. Welcome to the C2K report. This isn't just a, just a normal C2K report though. As you can see on the screen, we've got extra, extra help. Not just extra help, but warriors uh, mm -hmm. in this room in order to, to fight the good fight. And so tonight I'm joined by uh, a great company of, of hosts. That's an interesting way to put it. Just kind of came out that way. <clears throat> but I want to introduce to you um, a, a couple of good friends before I hand it over to Randy, who's going to introduce these ladies to you and get us started with a word of prayer. I want to introduce uh, uh, Jim Odell, who, um, as you're looking at the screen, he's in the he's in the top middle. Uh, hey, Jim, welcome to the program. Okay, he's muted. And I want to introduce uh, Randy and his wife Robin. Uh, I bet, I bet, I bet you know which one gets more <laughs> attention. Yeah, but uh, you know, welcome Randy and Robin to the C2K report. Uh, you know, as usual, Randy, um, so glad you're here. Hey, it's great to be with you again for another podcast, Rick. And it's been a while since we've done a roundtable. So it's good to get back into doing these and to see what uh, God is doing um, in other lives and other ministries and how there are other kingdom builders out there. And it's good to have this group together. And it's, it's wonderful to have uh, my wife, Mrs. Randy Conway Poems, Robin, uh, sitting beside me. And, and like you already introduced Jim, he is, uh, he is our professor emeritus and, and boy, what a treat to have Jim with us. But the, the, the uh, ladies that are with us, the uh, beautiful uh, red circle with the J in it. <laughs> <laughs> and for, for reasons that of security and reasons that will become clearer as we continue with this podcast, we'd like to welcome uh, to this very special roundtable, Tammy. And that's all we're going to call her tonight is Tammy. Uh, and Tammy, th so great to uh, have this opportunity to have you on this uh, podcast with us tonight and uh, to hear your testimony and what God has laid on your heart and what you're going to share. And the other beautiful lady that you see on your screen is Jody LaDolce. And Jody is uh, with Warriors Rise. I think the, uh, into, yeah, I got it got to do the, the hand motions as you say that Italian <laughs> name, right? With warriors and the top, the entire name of her ministry, she told me, is uh, Warriors for Christ Rise. And it is time for us to rise. Yeah. But I'll let Jody take care of introducing you to Warriors Rise and her website and what she does. And we are so grateful to have you with us as well, Jody. Yes. I think this is going to be a great conversation. And uh, and God's going to do mighty things. And, uh, and uh, I know Rick always calls on me to pray to close out the programs, but we're going to do something different because we're going to start with a prayer. And Jody, would you honor us by taking us to the throne of God and asking for his blessing Amen. and his will to be done and what we're doing right here tonight? Amen. Yes, absolutely. 
Father, first and foremost, we glorify your mighty and holy name. We thank you for your presence and your goodness, your love, your mercy, and grace. We invite your Holy Spirit here in this meeting, Lord God. We ask you to lead us and guide us in all truth. We ask you to bless the information that will be coming today. We thank you, Father, that we have full authority over all darkness, all evil, all demonic spirits. We bind every form of witchcraft, every divination. We bind any monitoring spirits now by the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name. We ask, Father God, that you send your warrior angels to surround each one of us, Lord, with fire, flames, uh, swords that are ready to cut asunder that which is not of you. I thank you, Father, that you will lead this meeting. You will bless all that hear, and you will bless those that are fighting the good fight of faith for truth and for your will to be done in this earth as it is in heaven. We give you all glory in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen and amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. All right. So um, let's get the conversation started. But let's let's give uh, let's give the ladies an opportunity to kind of you know introduce who they are you know what's what's going on what's going on in in their in their life and what the purpose of this particular roundtable is because this isn't a regular roundtable this is this is a warriors table you know this is like the you know the round table of of legendary you know Camelot right. Mm -hmm. This is the this is the round table where where the warriors sit around and 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 do the work of the king. So um, I'm going to turn it over to you, Randy, and and uh, and kind of let you go from here. Okay. Well, I, I will start by saying this: God has a way of putting His people in the right place at the right time, so that He can make the connections He needs to make in order to. Uh, increase his kingdom. It's not to increase Rick Hidalgo or Randy Conway or Jim Odell. It is to increase his kingdom. He puts people in certain places at certain times. And uh, I actually was sharing at a conference uh, a long way from home, a very long way from home. And uh, after I shared, I as always, happens I get into inundated with people that have particular problems and questions and 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 I am literally in a in another building dealing with some people's issues while another individual was speaking well before the night is over that individual is also in this other building and that individual is Tammy and that's where I was introduced to Tammy and I've found out that God always puts me in these conferences, not so that I can share a poem or not so that I can teach someone about authentication, but so that I can meet the person that he has designed long beforehand for me to meet. And I met Tammy uh, many states away from home. And within a few short months, we began to communicate. And uh, I, I'm not going to tell her story. I'm just setting up how God put us together so that Jim Odell, Rick Hidalgo, and Randy Conway of the C2K Report were able to begin to become involved in her situation and doing what God has shown us to share with her so that he can expand his kingdom and rescue his children. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to Tammy to share from there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Um, I um, thank you, thank you, Rick and and Jim. Thank you for this opportunity tonight. And uh, I want to say this is this is this is definitely definitely huge, huge, huge blessing. Um, and uh, and I just want to um, and it's it's so Jody. It is so nice uh, since we um, you know uh, it's 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 a wow. <laughs> Glad to say wow to see you here. Um, so. With that said, uh, my this is God is I'm I, I'm almost like uh, in awe. I'm just in awe of what God's doing in this situation and uh, bringing uh, just all the right people. It's been a prayer with other teams praying for the just all just pure, pure hearted people and the right the right people, the right teams, that kind of thing. And um, 
and to this is a really uh, a spiritual battle besides a besides a physical battle. Uh, I have a son named Jonah. Um, his last name is Reef, and uh, I this has been a um, ongoing uh, battle of a government sponsored international child trafficking case. Um, this is also a case that goes into what is known in, you know, in various, they call it uh, secret societies or some known as the brotherhood um, where children are trafficked into a, a different higher level called the hierarchy. And so, so this is a particular type of case where you have a lot of different various agencies, three letter agencies involved um, in the methodology and involved in, in the um, planning, targeting of my son and I um, and targeting our family. So to, just to kind of put it in a nutshell, really, um, it's a convoluted case. It really is. And it, it involves uh, three states and two continents. And so uh, after going through many, many doors of trying to get, having cases open and shut, open and shut, open and shut, open and shut. Um, it's, you get to a place where you're like, okay, God, what, what, what is it? What is it? You, what's the steps? What's the solution? Where is it you want me? You know, I'm, I'm that vessel. I said yes to this. So, um, I'm, my goal is to see not just my child come out, but to see him help lead many, many others come out. So all of a sudden here I am and I am led to these wonderful people. And, um, as different, people of different facets and different um, backgrounds have come together. And our goal is to see um, these, like I said, to see them come out, but also to make a ripple in the spirit for these children to come out, to open those doors in the spiritual realm that actually opens into the physical realm so that those doors come open to see freedom. So I'm going to start with that. Any Amen. Amen. You know, uh, as you, as you were talking, uh, I was thinking about how this all came together, uh, Tammy. And, you know, as you began sharing privately with us your story, and of course, those who watch the C2K report know we talk about authentication and coming, becoming unregistered from this Babylonian system, this corporate system, and, uh, you know, trying to follow the world the word, how to live in the world and not of the world, how to come out of Babylon. And uh, as we began talking about that and you began sharing your story with Jim, he began literally using terminology that you were extremely familiar with from this, from your work in child trafficking and your own experience. And you were like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And again, right. in talking about how God puts people together, uh, Jody had even shared with me, that for two years she had looked to um, connect with you. And here uh, suddenly on, on this night of October 12th, 2022, uh, we're, we're seeing what God has connected together and, and uh, the wisdom of Jim, the work and, and the, the spiritual uh, warrior that, that Jody is, the trouble that you've gone through and, and Robin's sitting here beside me. She's, she is here because she knows she, that she wants to be a moral support to her mother's heart goes out to you continually, constantly. Her, excuse me. Her mother's heart is broken for you. And, and Rick and I are, are, are just uh, in awe that God would call us two bumpkins to come into a place where we are, are helping and working with and doing what we can uh, to see that you have grounds. In fact, Jody had said in some of our pre-show conversation, it is time for the warriors to rise and it's, it's time to, to get out of those uh, church pews and do something besides say, I'll pray for you, dear. Mm -hmm. uh, and to, to, you know, yes. uh, let's put on our big boy armor uh, and, and actually do something, okay? And so here we are, uh, Tammy, and uh, I know that what we have offered through authentication has been a benefit. It's not the answer. God is the answer. God is the one who opens doors and closes doors. Uh, and I don't want to take any more of your time. 
just trying to set up for our, our audience the seriousness of, uh, of uh, your situation. Yeah. If you have a child that is in uh, harm's way and God has chosen this group to come together to share with those of you who are now listening. And if you listen, the Bible tells us we can't look away. We have to look at this. We have to hear this message. And if you hear this message, God is going to put on your heart what you can do uh, for this, not just for Tammy's situation, as horrendous yep. as it is. But here we are a few days away from probably one of the worst, uh, the worst demonic holidays where children will be taken and children will die. And it's time for the warriors to rise. Amen. 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 Absolutely. So one of the things that constantly just is, is I stand in awe of is the one degree of separation between people in, in the spiritual realm. You know, uh, I've met Jody one time. Jody, I met you one time on a call that we had, yet, yet all the things that you told me about yourself, I feel like I've been walking it with you for years and years and years because... <laughs> You know, you you were telling us the connection that you had with some some other patriots out there, <clears throat> and every time we'd say a name, oh yeah, Jody, you know, she's like, oh, I, I know that that guy, I know that gal, I know. Um, so so Jody, it's just uh, it, it's amazing. I'd I'd like to hear from you a little bit about this 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 subject all around here. Okay, um, well, I started where I was praying for a gentleman named Field McConnell who right now is uh, unable to speak. He's got a gag order on a false arrest by some uh, situations that were ridiculous. But anyway, uh, so I, I was sending him prayers, and one day he wrote me and he said, um, I'm going to rest now because you and Jesus have the next watch. We're both Marine veterans. So uh, it meant so, so much to me. And then the next time he had a show, he's like, well, that woman, Marine, please give me a call. I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> does anybody have his number? <laughs> You know, and I was able to call in and he asked me to be um, one of five people he asked to be by him. He called me Dash Five and uh, and he asked me to pray on a show and he gave me the opportunity to teach the word, which is the most important thing to me. Exhort the body. That's what the Lord's called me to do. So I love sharing the gospel. I love sharing the word. And he had something called the Children's Crusade that they were trying to build to stop the sex trafficking of children. This comes to me from a very personal thing that um, I'm not afraid to talk about, but at a very young age, age five, um, I was molested for until I was 11. And I determined that no child should ever have to smell, taste, or see the things that I had to go through for all those years. So this is very personal to me. So as a warrior for Christ, uh, I feel like David, and even talking to you about it, I have goosebumps. We have got to stop allowing things to just happen because we are the light of the world. We are the army of light. We are God's children, and we're not of the world, but we're still in it. But unless we're willing to stand up and rise and fight, they just roll right over the top of us and they just do whatever they want to do. And they'll take somebody who's dressed like a woman and put them in your kindergarten and make your kids think that that's normal. I'm sorry. They tell, there was a time in minute, I've been in ministry most of my life. And I remember when the pastor came and said, we're 501c3 and they don't want us talking about certain subjects anymore. And I was like, sorry, I'm going to talk about the word of God. And if it goes against what they're saying, so be it, you know. So Amen. that was where my passion came from to try to protect children. And um, someone said, you always have that on your mind. You're always thinking about uh, child molestation. or child No, I'm always thinking about child protection. Mm -hmm. So then the world expanded even wider to these satanic people who pretend to be Christians. They come in as pastors. They infiltrate mm -hmm. churches. They infiltrate. They set up fake ministries. And now, all of a sudden, I'm in the middle of this <laughs> world of witches and Satanists, and uh, they're sending me curses from Field Show, and and I'm like, ah, oh, sorry, I don't receive curses. You can have this back, you know, and <laughs> you know, 
and uh you know and it and all of a sudden the lord just began to it was like training by fire you know it ex kept expanding to show me how big that world actually was and how devoted to their god small g they are and how the enemy uses the tower of babel situation to keep us all speaking different languages and not joining together in one mind and one accord so um so that's why i'm here i want to protect the children but also exhort the body to come together i don't care if you sprinkle or dip someone in water i don't care if you speak in tongues or you don't what i care about is that you pray the warfare prayer that god's will be done on earth as it is in heaven and that we get this right for the father that he can use his people here on this earth to mm -hmm. penetrate darkness destroying it finding and releasing these children and praying these children you know um into freedom because he told us to set the captives free and uh, when he called me into ministry i was 15 years old my pastor said there's something on you you need to go pray i'm 15 years old i go behind a jewish synagogue and i said i don't know what i'm doing god but talk to me what are you trying to say and I opened the word and I pointed like my finger on the Bible, like any 15 year old would do. And it said, uh, Luke 4, 18 and 19, he has anointed me to preach the gospel. You know, he has told me to set the captives free, to preach the acceptable year of the world. You know, the whole scripture to bring healing. And I, and now is the first time that I've understood what setting the captives free means. And I am honored to stand with T, I, I, uh, Tammy, I wanted to for her to get in touch with me because I believe she needs warriors around her. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. And I believe she needs people who are fearless around her. Yes. And I th think she needs people who are spiritually mature and strategic when fighting the enemy. Uh, the, the church is on a battlefield in diapers and drinking bottles and we need to get our big boy pants on and put on our true armor we have an armor of light according to romans 13 and 12 and we have an armor of god for warfare and uh, uh i've heard randy say it should be dirty it definitely should be dirty and the only time it should be shiny is when we want to shine a corner so we can bl blast the light in the eyes of the enemy yeah so um you know and so this is why i'm here because these children need to be set free and they are going to come up and rise up fearless as the Joel army. I see it in my spirit. What the enemy meant for harm against these children, the Lord is going to turn it around and they will crush his head. And I want to be part of the Lord's work in this. So that's why I'm here. So. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> Amen. That's amazing. And, and we have we have wow. one more right here that you know hasn't spoken yet, and I'm, I'm going to get to him <laughs> right now because, uh, you know, guys, don't hit the stop button on this video. Don't go away from this video. And when we end this video, do not stop because a tsunami declaration is coming at the end of this video. You're going to hear something that that we were witness of. Okay, Randy and Jim and I had the opportunity of being there. I'm the one behind the video camera here and you're going to you're going to see you're going to see how how amazing and how strategic the declaration this tsunami declaration really is and and I'm telling you the dark isn't going to be quite as dark by the time this declaration comes forward because more light is going to be exposed to the darkness. Jim you were there. You were there. Uh, we'd like to hear from you now. Yeah, it was uh, it was quite something, uh, as we've talked about uh, many times that, you know, Christ said He's the way and the life, and and He is. And of course, to um, have that path straight, you know, you do have to get right with with Christ. You got to become part of His family, and I believe that once you do, uh, the evil ones kind of have a problem. And yeah. it's, uh, we have to understand that we have to be careful because everything we agree to is a type of a contract. And, of course, we've talked about the ultimate contract, which is the covenant with, with Christ and with God. And it puts you into a place where it, um, 
you, you are especially known by the evil ones where they can't go there. Um, as an example, in, in Acts, you know, there's, um, uh, let me see if I can find it here real quick. Um, I think it's Acts 19.13. Uh, this is where we had some, some, uh, some of the Judeans who were, they consider themselves exorcists, right? Well, it's kind of funny. They soon realized that maybe they weren't so good at it because they were trying to call out, out the demons in the name of Christ and uh, uh, in the name of Paul. And, of course, if you remember, they got beat up and kicked out of the house. It says, well, uh, the demons, the demonic says, well, we know who Christ is, who Jesus is, but and we know who Paul is, but we don't know who you guys are. And, and I think it's because, you see, these folks were not part of God's family at that point. Because Christ started something new where you could become part of God's family through adoption process. And the thing is, you get written in the uh, Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm here to tell you, the demonics knew that right away. Mm -hmm. They knew it right away. Uh, and so, basically, it was hands-off at that point. And they, they knew who the followers of Christ were because of the new process of becoming an adopted son of god so the demonics know who the sons of god are and that is our protection and that's why christ said i'm the way and the life it's the only way and i think if anybody's having trouble uh, christ really is the path for anyone that's having trouble with the evil ones uh, trying to take your children uh, if you've been involved already as a young person um, you do have to understand Jesus Christ is the one that will save you, and you just need to uh, rebuke these people when they come to uh, come towards you. And I think you'll find that there's going to be situations once you do become um, part of Christ's family, and you do rescind all these old contracts. You pull yourself out. You get rid of all the agreements because you've got a new life and a new covenant now with Christ. And I think you'll find that that uh, they can't harm you anymore. Uh, they're going to try to. They're still going to try to deceive you. Don't get me wrong. But you know what? They can't do anything now because now you belong to God, belong to Christ. And you know, it's. Uh, you might find sometimes that um, they ignore you, or you're invisible, or they're going to come to try to cast spells upon you. That those spells <laughs> mean nothing. It becomes. Uh, it becomes like a clanging gong. It means nothing, as the word tells us. Um, so Christ is the way. We got to remember that. And and um, uh, Tammy's done something extraordinarily important, uh, and she did exactly what we talked about, and that's getting rid of the old contracts and coming and going into a new covenant, which is a special kind of contract. People need to understand a covenant is a contract with God Almighty and His Son Jesus the Christ. And once you do that. You're you're not owned by anybody anymore other than God Almighty, like it should have been the beginning, and that's what she has done, and it's 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 wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. Amen. Yes. He he was talking about people being invisible. Does that happen? It it, it has it has. Um, I have to say, if um, I I have a. I have a couple little stories and um, um, that uh, of being invisible, visible, invisible, and uh, <laughs> and not visible. Um, and I think because you know there is a, uh, a a contractual nature, right, that we are we're discussing here, right? And so um, cutting off that contractual nature, and which obviously all these children, I want to make sure I mention this and I add, we had a. I have a couple of really wonderful survivor, high-level friends that I uh, that I know, and and uh, and one thing I, I want to reiterate that they mentioned that um, when they were when their altars were created, those were contracts. They were contractual nature that they were made in. So again, so those are things that went through the blood of Jesus Christ and through through the power of Jesus Christ those contracts get can be broken off but it's your only way out is through jesus christ and then you become what invisible i mean so yeah you have to use some wisdom don't let, don't get me don't get me wrong i'm you know I, i'm not going to just run out there with my hair on fire you know what i mean and i still have to wear my beard and mustache sometimes so um but there's a but again after i did the baptism though i had a situation where i was um surrounded 
in a location. And, and I kid you not, and when I say surrounded, uh, I mean underworld people, and I, I, I'm going to save some of the details because of just for certain security reasons, but they were underworld people that did law enforcement stuff. And this was, I was surrounded. There was quite a few of them. And I kid you not, they were like, a couple of them were literally a couple of feet behind me. I mean, with their vehicles. And I just was talking to the Lord, like, you know, just help me, help me here. And all I heard was slowly turn around and, you know, walk down the stairs and walk away. And it was like I was in the Matrix and they all froze. It was so weird. I, 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 I kid you not. I wish I wish I could, you know, I, I have witnesses so that watched it all happen and they were shocked. And so I, I did. I literally turned around, literally walked away and darted across the, like a street and we literally drove past them. And then it occurred again. I had a, I had another event, and this time was literally weeks after that. With um, and this was in a hot spot location, with actual people that were actually, I mean, literally that were um, part of the case. They were officials that were part of the kidnapping of me and involved in the kidnapping of my son for the trafficking officials out West working for a bigger ring that goes to higher level people outside the United States, a primary group. And I recognized one of them. And, um, and I, uh, I, I just prayed and, and I was like, okay, God. And I, do you know, I walked out of that place. And when we got to the vehicle, they had another vehicle sitting in front of us, but God created a way out. He literally had a window of opportunity, and it was a window. It was a door, matter of fact. Um, all right, it was a parking lot with a parking space in front of us that was diagonal to the to the left. Okay, <laughs> okay. So <laughs> if we're gonna get technical, but no, but it was it was still it was a door. It was a way out, and we. I kid you not. Like I and this this official started coming over, to, like literally over to where I was, and I slowly got in the vehicle. And um, it was like, and we, we literally zigzagged, we drove away. So there, I have to say, um, going into the spirit and making a new covenant, this new covenant with Christ, this new covenant from, with Almighty God, it was, there is this um, absolute, there is this sense of like a, like a, <sighs> you know, feeling like, oh my gosh, like you got me, like you're like, you're protecting me. Like, you know, like I'm, there's a sense of a different type of refreshing freedom to it. And, uh, and it doesn't mean I don't use wisdom. It doesn't mean that I don't, um, uh, you know, still, you know, err on the side of caution and go, okay, God, where do you want, do you want me to go here? It's gotta be through him. Do I do this? Do I do that? It's still, it's still gotta be with his permission, you know, with that, it, with the agreement that I make with him that, you know, that, that means I got to lean on him, doesn't it? It means it's in his power, not mine. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Right? Well, so, as you were speaking to you, and, and I hope I didn't jump on you, Rick. No, uh, no, 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 no. no. Go ahead. Guys. Let's have a conversation. I was thinking of this question I was wanting to ask T, and she basically answered it before I could even ask it. Because what I was going to ask her is uh, the thing that you, you referred to, Rick, and, and and Jim testified to, and Robin was there as well. When we, when we witnessed this this declaration being spoken into the air, where the where the, the uh, uh, powers that be could hear it, it was spoken from her mouth. Uh, we witnessed the baptism. We we saw this covenant take place, and I know Tammy has been fighting this battle for some time. Uh, to get her son back. She's had to learn uh, more law than most uh, attorneys will ever know. She's been in, in more courthouses and, and been through more paperwork uh, than anybody should should have to. I mean, literally, uh, it's like I, I told someone one time, um, a family member of mine, after we'd had to go to some court, we were actually with child custody with our grand our grandsons, I said, I learned everything I ever wanted to know about courts and the law watching Perry Mason growing up. I didn't want to experience any of this. And I know that's her feeling. I didn't yes. want to experience any of this. She didn't ask for any no. of this. 
I know it's been many years of struggle and fight and learning and on your knees. But my question was, have you felt anything uh, as a change since making that declaration? And do you feel like you have grounds to fight for them? And you, and you literally, you literally answered that question. <laughs> I, I really think that doing this baptism, because, you know, it, again, it was on behalf too of my son, Jonah, um, cause again, I have the authority as his mother, uh, as he still is of tender age. And so I have, you know, I, I literally have that authority to speak out over him and, um, and do a decree and a declaration that he, you know, through the power of God, okay, through almighty God, our, you know, creator God, through Jesus Christ, he will come out and to call him forward and to trust God that through this new covenant, that you know, I it was a new beginning, new covenant, um, and to and to literally the the, I, the whole goal here is spiritually is to is is this is creating our goal is to create and, and and my goal and my family's goal and I know everybody here is to create that ripple in the spirit. So guess what, enemy? I said, you know, Jesus, like I want you to throw that that uh, <laughs> that well, it's David's, you know, rock and take out Goliath, and that's what I'm doing. I'm taking out Goliath and I'm really dealing with the Philistines. And so you uncircumcised Philistines, I'm yeah. taking you out. Yeah. Amen. Taking you down with this baptism. You know, there's a, well, you, go ahead, Jim. Yeah. I was just going to say, you know, one of the things that, that um, when we talk to T about this is I'm, I'm just going to go through the scripture because it's really important. I think this is what makes all the difference in the world. It's all about contracts and and if we go into a covenant because this is christ talking in matthew 16 19 and he says i'll give unto you the the, the the key the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven that's what she did yes she took what was bound she loosed it which hmm. means now the heavenly host if she calls upon that's the that's the key the, the keys of the kingdom. So when she goes to the heavenly kingdom now and says, hey, they no longer, I am no longer bound to them. Come and help me out. And guess what? Now the heavenly hosts are going to be right at her shoulders and, and they're going to keep it all away. And that's what she did. Amen. Amen. I mean, yes. you know, there's a, there's a, the Bible declares that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Okay. Mm -hmm. The power of life and death is in the tongue. When you make a declaration, you are literally creating life or death. Okay? And and when, when you guys hear this, what I call tsunami declaration at the end, we keep we keep calling it we keep calling it little things. It's 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 not as little as we're making it out to be. It's tsunami. We're talking Tidal about wave. Like huge tidal wave. By the way, that was purposely picked out tidal wave uh, because we're because because we're dealing we're dealing with we're dealing with uh, um, with 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 a Jonah here, okay. Yes. And 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 Jonah, we all know the story of Jonah, okay. So so when 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 Tammy de made the declaration of life over over her son and you're going to hear it and then put away all contracts ended all contracts rescind, rescinded all contracts uh even ones that she didn't know about because we know how these how these foolish people are they they put on uh like uh like jody said earlier um they put on these preset curses right they're they're preset mm -hmm. from their spiritual perspective They've got no influence on us whatsoever, man. We're under the blood of Jesus. I mean, that's how we overcome, right? We overcome by the word of our testimony, by the blood of the Lamb. That's how we. That is how we overcome. So, 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 what you're gonna hear at the end of this, <laughs> you're gonna hear her putting her entire being into this declaration, and I, I don't. Guys, I'm a tough guy. I think I'm a tough guy. I'm a wrestling promoter. You know what I mean? Tough guy, right? I wear a mask. No, I don't. That's not true. Don't 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 tell people I wear a mask. I will not ever admit it. But but the 
But the thing is, okay, even as a tough guy, I couldn't make it through that. Man, I had, I, I couldn't make, emotionally, I was gone by the time that thing was over because, because of the power and the revelation that came through, through that declaration. And you guys are going to get to experience that at the end of this. Amen. Amen. You know, and, and we've talked a lot about contracts already, and uh, that's really Jim's forte and uh, how those contracts and, and I, and I hope people get this because we can go to a, um, we can go to a, a, uh, a Patriot movement. That's the word I'm looking for where, you know, people are saying, we've got to fix Babylon. We've got to fix this government. We've got to fix this or fix that. Or we can go to, you know, some, uh, a church site and listen to, to, to them, try to encourage us through the word. But, God is raising up a remnant where he has put the two together. We understand where the Bible says the government will be on his shoulders and we can take these, this government that, that has tried to um, overwhelm us and to overcome us, this government that has been usurped from us and an and artificial one put in its place because we know we don't have a de jure government. We have a de facto government and they have put these contracts on us and, and God has raised up people like Jim and Rick and, and others in the C2K report. And then now we're bringing in uh, a Jody. And we, what we have done is take this patriot movement, this political movement, this government situation that has been separated from the church. Because believe me, the separation of church and state lie is not just to keep the uh, uh, things the way they are so they can maintain the status quo. It's to keep the church out of the government. Uh, period, and that the government is on his shoulders, my Bible tells me, and that his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His dominion endures from generation to generation, and the kingdoms of this world have become, that's present tense, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ, and we can put the two together so that people like Tammy, who have suffered under this system, and, and another survivor sitting right here with us, Jody, who has suffered under this system, that seem to have uh, no recourse. God has given us a recourse, ground to stand on. We can put on our armor, but if we don't have solid ground to fight from, how are we going to put up a fight? And God has married the two of these together. The declaration was amazing. And you might think, well, what is a declaration? Might I remind you, the nation in which all of us reside right now began with what? A declaration. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yes. I know my wife is, she likes to just be quiet and sit in the background and she doesn't like, she doesn't even like being on this camera, but I might just pause for a moment and ask if there's anything you'd like to add to what you saw when you saw Tammy's declaration of baptism and meeting Jody and, uh, you know, Jim and Rick, would you like to add anything in this conversation? Well, what I was thinking of a while ago when Tammy was talking about the way that she lives. I thought we should all be living that way. We shouldn't, you know, take a step out of our homes without prayer. We 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 don't have to live the way she does, you know. But we should all be living that way. And and as far as the declaration, I've never I've never been a part of anything like it. I mean, it was amazing. And you could feel the tsunami and the tidal wave, you know, in the spirit. And um, there was just a change in the atmosphere. And I am, oh, my life has been changed by meeting her and getting to know her. And I look forward to getting to know Jody better. And um, I'm, I'm so grateful that the Lord is allowing us to be a part of this because, mm -hmm. um, this is important. This is big. I, I don't know of anything more important. Uh, the children are everything. And we have, to, we have to make it about the children. And so I, I'm just, I'm blessed to be a part of it. Amen. I, mean, I think it's, uh, I think what, uh, what uh, she did was a true declaration of independence of the best kind. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, let me, let me, let me, let me set, set the stage for a minute. This, this, this little round table here that we're calling the war, war room. Maybe you got to come up with a better name. The war table. Everybody good with that war table? I don't know. We'll come up with something. This is the armory, buddy. The armory. Yeah, we're armory. The armory. <laughs> let, let me, let me yes. Set, let me set this up because there's a lot of things. I mean, I mean I'm hoping we're going to do this again, you know, multiple times. Because yes. what, what, where, where we're going to go from here, you know, we, I, I got to set this up this way because I am, I'm disappointed in the, in the church, the Ecclesia. Do you know why I'm disappointed? We've had authority ever since Matthew chapter 28. Okay. <laughs> Ever since that moment when Jesus was given all power and authority in heaven and in earth, we've mm -hmm. had the authority to rise up and take control of this planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we've had that. But we've sat on the sidelines playing church and like Jody says in diapers, okay, where we, we like our huggies too much. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're sitting over here. In the in the in the, on the sidelines playing church with diapers, while a Luciferian council guides the world and does whatever they want to without the church rising up and saying, "Whoa, whoa, 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 stop right there." That that okay, no more. Done. Okay, from this day forward. I mean. Um, we, we can't have that. We, we are going to demand how and instruct even, even the hordes of Satan themselves. We're going to instruct them as to how it's going to be from here, from this day forward. Amen. If I can interject, Jim Please. said it a little while ago. It's about relationship with Jesus Christ. What yes. happened is the body of Christ became dependent upon each other. They, they were codependent with the pastors and and jeremiah i think it's 23 or 24 talks about woe unto the pastors and woe unto the prophets you know yes. everybody it everybody became about uh their their standing their finances their uh, routines and they just blocked the lord right out of the church so most of the church people right now are on milk they should be on meat and part of the reason they're on milk is because they're waiting to be fed and uh a friend of mine reminded me of something I had told her. I was watching birds on my deck, and uh, the baby birds were big enough to feed themselves, but they would sit next to the mother and open their mouths and just wait for her to put the food in. And she'd fly off because she wanted them to eat, and they wouldn't do it, and they would you know, sit there with their mouths open. And I see the church that way. We've missed teaching the body about intimacy with the Lord. And, uh, and then what's happened is the do indoctrination of television and you know, everybody's got to have the TV on 24 hours a day, the radio, you know, the books, the kids' cartoons. It's all indoctrinated with Satanism and putting fear in people that darkness is stronger than light. Darkness is, uh, you know, the, the, where it's at and God is nothing. And they've been indoctrinating people. God is all-powerful, all-knowing. There is a none like him. Jesus Christ is the only one, like our brother Randy said here, the government will be upon his shoulders. He is the king of kings and lord of all lords, the savior of all mankind. If you don't know him and you're not building intimacy, you know, we're going to get to know each other. I'm looking forward to getting to know T better and all of you. And we do that through communication, through hanging out, through, you know, uh, getting to know each other. And this is what we yep. do, Lord. And that's why the church is weak. You know, it became about wow. programs. And, and then also the children's ministry. I was a director over children's ministry, to pa director or pastor, whatever you want to call it. And I wanted to teach them. I, I called them uh, SWAT students with absolute truth because i wanted them to know the lord you know and um that, that that's missing but they're getting inundated in school so we've been falling down and tripping on the job and we need to rise up rise up warriors that's what's what we're for and the minute we get it and we're in one mind one accord in intimacy with our king our savior and serving our father 
and uh, re requesting through warfare prayer, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Boy, we're going to see some demons run. They don't like it when we know what we're doing. So thank you for letting me interject. That. No, 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 no. We're having a conversation, so please feel free to interject. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of, a, of being in a place where our options are pampers or huggies. Right. Yep. You know, I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And people are drinking the Kool-Aid. We talked about that, right? We talked about yeah. the Kool-Aid and people are, um, you know, are more interested, like in, like with even Randy and Robin, the, the watered down Kool-Aid, it seems to be, uh, you know, uh, more popular, you know, and um, <laughs> so, and, and I have to, real good too. <laughs> right right and it is it's something where i mean i've i've uh, unfortunately um i've been through a lot of different ministries that um have where i've had people leadership literally say well i'll pray for you but i mean that i wasn't called to do that that was what you were called to do and so um and again there's it's like where well wait a minute it's like no where's that body of christ okay so um so again you have people that were like well this is kind of you know, I can't, this is scary, and um, I, I just can't help because um, the level of this, and um, and I get it, they're worried about their family, and, they're, and, uh, and they're, I get that kind of thing, but then I have people that are telling me, well, they're like, Tammy, you've got to, where's your faith? If you're not having faith, remember the prophecy, you know, it's like, well, and then I, I think back to some of these other people who want me to, Tammy, have your faith, like, you don't have faith, and you gotta, you know, remember the, and it's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait, wait, you're the one that just said you were, you're, 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 you're basically, you didn't say it, but you kind of did, like, well, you're, sorry, I can't help you, because i uh, worried, I'm worried, you know, they're worried about this, worried about that, and it's like, and, um, and there is some people that I work with, I want to just make sure I make this clear. I do, there is some certain individuals and certain level of teams that due to their level, yes, there's some people that have to do things, let's just say differently because of their family, okay? Mm -hmm. and, um, and because they had some leaders that were taken out, that we, that we uh, you know, so uh, there's, there is some of, there is a level of that to, and it's working, it's being, it's working with wisdom is what it is. And, and when the time that they're called to do whatever they're, that God is having them do, but let me tell you, those people really do hear from the Lord and they don't just, <laughs> these guys have giant swords. They have huge, huge, huge like armor on and they're no joke. And they, um, they, they are waiting of when they're going to be the vanguard and you know what I mean? And the, the rear guard, the whatever it is and to strike. And so, so I respect that I have to say, um, but, but they're waiting for when God wants them to do what they're supposed to do. That's different. Mm -hmm. It's different That's than those, right. It's different. It really is. I respect them. The mm -hmm. others that are like, yeah, sorry, wasn't called to do that, but you mm -hmm. know what we'll do? Let's raise money for Barbie and like, and let's have like, you know, like get together and we'll like, <gasps> Jesus will be so happy. We'll send money. We'll go. We'll send the money away to like Haiti and shoeboxes. I mean, oh, you know. So there's that, you know. And I, and I have a, I go. Some people know my sense of humor out there, but it's just, <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, just, you're talking about recon teams, and we need those recon teams. We do. We really do. That, like, yeah. like literally, like your military in the spirit, because this is about you know, going into the spirit and we're breaking down and removing strongholds. These children, especially like my son and other children that are, that were taken into the hierarchy of the brotherhood. We're talking like people in the Bilderbergs that are involved, the committee of 300. You're talking about people that are such high level that go into, uh, that goes into such like high level, high level people that it's literally that are Luciferian that are controlled by a Luciferian brotherhood. So if that's the case, we have to have, they have super soldiers that these guys have monarch programmed that come after people. Mm -hmm. So we have to be, we have to be ready to be called to be you know, Yahweh's super soldiers and be ready to be trained up because guess what? Those children are like waiting on us. They're waiting. They're waiting for those to come forward and be on the other side when that door opens. Yes. That's, thank you. That's, that's, that's where I, I wanted you to, to go. Kind of, kind of explain that there's, there is order to this organization that, that, 
you know that that's uh, that's out there. And and by the way, tea, or you know we we affectionately call her tea because I we actually got to meet her face to face one time and that was just amazing. Um, but uh, let, let me tell you something about this lady. Man, is she in the know about things? Okay. She is in the know about things. Do not name drop with her. Okay. She will literally devastate your life. She she will make you regret name dropping. Okay. That's how good she is. So I'm just saying, just saying. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. So going into this, there's a structure in this world that um, that our churches and our and a lot of the pastors of this world. I just want to start off by saying, um, in in going off into that uh, realm, um, that they ignore or they're not uh, they're not abreast or they're not educated or if they do know, they don't want to go down those roads and they're not educating their their flock. You know the populace, which is you know what it's it's completely. I'm sorry, but it's a, uh, it's it's. I think it's just sinful. I'm sorry, I just do. I really do, because let me tell you, um, it's we have to have, we have to know what it's like to be prepared in a in a military type. When you're in the military, is it true? You got to go through training, got to go through boot camp. My dad was the, he's a veteran and uh, and he was in the army, national guard, and he, hey, he went through boot camp. You, he went through training, and same thing in the spirit, right? We have to go through that military boot camp because what we're fighting in this structure, and I'm going to go into it, it's a level of of people that are lineage. My case is called a bloodline case, and mm -hmm. it's because it goes into lineages that these people have tracked people like myself, like my like my son. Um, but really, they, it goes even to my grandparents, uh, and it, go, it goes beyond that. So this structure that's, that is uh, controlling things in this world has different departments. And like as you have, and these goes, this goes into religions, people. I mean, this is going into your, it starts at your Vatican, your Roman Catholic, which goes into another whole level. These guys are, these are secret societies that are running amok. OK, that are put in place. For instance, you have, again, your Knights of Templar, your Knights Malta, your Teutonic Knights, which of, of, of Knights of Jerusalem. It goes on and then it goes into this tier system that goes into your different levels of your again, your then underneath that is your CFR, which is Council of Foreign Relations. And you have your uh, uh, Chatham House with your RRRA that so, you know, that they oversee. Royal International Affairs kind of thing. And then you have another tier of committee of 300, 300 families is what that means. You know, then you have your Druidic Council that oversees the whole thing of families that are connected with the Bilderbergs. So you have that as well. You have the structure of these people. And what happens is you have people that are in our polit that are in politics. Oh, wait a minute. We have church leaders, Roman Catholic Church, no. Mormon. Okay, Protestants too. Hey, there's the Lutherans. Let's not forget. You know, you have even synagogues. Okay, you have you have the Islamic nation leaders. Guess what? You'll find out. They look like they're all divided, but when you get inside that Knights of Malta, inside there, when they're doing the rituals, they're shaking hands and they're all one big happy family. Mm -hmm. These guys are all working together. Mm -hmm. So you have again, you have politicians. They are also part of this structure, and it is a tier. It is a tier system that goes all the way down, and these people work in in uh, under different associated. They call it the thirteen families. Well, heck, there's actually three sets of thirteen families, mm -hmm. and so you have your highest level of thirteen families is in Europe. They they go back to old money. Your dragon, red, black dragon society families from the planet Jeanettes. Then you have your another set of dragon families. Um, it goes into your white dragons, your green dragons, and these guys rule another part of the of your you know, your Asian, you know, area. Um, you know, goes into China and the Li families, that kind of thing. And you have a you have another set that was under the Rothschilds, the blue dragon families that are in, that are controlling the West. Okay, and so um, you've got your gold dragon and your Chinese elders. So it goes into this whole tier system. But if you were to go see these people in person. Guess what? They look normal because they're what? They're all sitting at a at a European Union conference, mm -hmm. at, a, at also at your UN in New York City. So they look like they just look like they're just these wealthy elites that are in you know control, making decisions for the rest of the world. 
But really, these people, it's all of this, it's a Luciferian system that's been set up. And it's a, it's a very big, very, very, um, it's a structure that's been going on since, since Babylon, mm -hmm. the Tower of Babel. Actually, and Deluvian before that, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Fallen angels going, going into then creating the Nephilim. So it goes into, goes, this has been going on for a really long time. So I feel like we're at a period in time when I really feel like God is raising up deliverers for such a time as this. Yeah. He does Amen. it in every generation. I, I almost feel like I have to apologize to people like uh, Tammy and Jody and people who have suffered under these uh, this hierarchy, this this structure that's been built. And of course, there are secret societies that hide hide secret societies that hide secret societies that are hidden behind an order that are hidden behind this. Uh, you know, it, it's just so convoluted. The web weavers have covered it and 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 have infiltrated. I almost feel like the the church owes people like Tammy, uh, and not almost. I absolutely feel like the church owes people like Tammy an apology that you have had to fight this structure by yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have, I have. And the thing is too, that these people are so, um, they have, they work, you know, the three letter agencies too, um, that are also underneath are all these guys that are MSAD, CIA, British MI6, um, you know, your, your, your Russian FSB, Mm -hmm. And it goes on. There's different ones in different countries to France, even. So these guys are all literally they it was all controlled like they're controlled by the Jesuits, um, which is controlled by the Vatican, your your black pope, your gray pope and the white pope. So people don't even understand that. I mean, I, I knew somebody, too, that um, used to be Roman Catholic. And she and I remember her. She was aware that the, the that the, the regular pope you see was evil, but she didn't know there was a black pope. Mm -hmm. And and he's not a black guy. He is a dark. He's higher level than, you know. Um, and I actually somebody literally thought that. This was even funnier. But he they, he's he's higher level, and he's matter of fact one of the people who is has has calls the shots on global affairs, and he mm -hmm. answers to lose for himself. So most people don't know that. And so again, it's it's these people, these three letter agencies answer to the Vatican. The answer to these, this uh, council, this theoretic Supreme Council, uh, to the Council of Thirteen, to and then they're all they also answer to some of these people that are in the Committee of Three Hundred. So, when you have that kind of structure, I mean, do you really think I was going to get any justice <laughs> from those right. people? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so laughable. It's just, yeah. it's absolutely ridiculous. And they're all bloodline too. They're yeah. bloodline people that come from these same families. They did, they wouldn't have been in those positions, and you don't get there unless you are. Right. Right. And you succeed. Matt, right. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Jody. I want to talk about the bloodline just really quickly yeah. in case anyone in your audience doesn't understand. The from the beginning. The, when Adam and Eve fell, the Lord knew he was going to be bringing our Redeemer through a pure bloodline. This is Satan's attempt to mimic that. So Jesus coming through the, the pure bloodline and not Nephilim, not anything. So now this is the satanic attempt when, when Tammy's talking about the bloodlines to bring the Antichrist through Correct. a pure bloodline yep. of, of uh, what they believe to be Cain. All right. So when, when she's talking about that, if people don't understand that we are, we are like the guys say here, we're two kingdoms at war, small K, the enemy, large K, our father and Jesus Christ, our savior. And the, the pure bloodline will be at war so that it's fates it in Genesis where, you know, that seed will be at war with our, with our seed. And we are created in the image and likeness of God with what, what uh, Rick was saying, all authority, we were supposed to have dominion, and we've been deceived since Eve is one of the little things I quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, but please understand what she's saying when she's talking about bloodline, bloodline. The only blood that matters is Jesus Christ's blood. That's correct. The only mm -hmm. bloodline that matters is Jesus Christ's blood. And that's the bloodline you need to focus on. But when, when Tammy's talking about it, this is why they take the kids. They're, they're trying to build this, uh, I believe, they're trying to build a little cushion of how many pure lines there are so that when Satan decides to, uh, you know, possess whoever's going to be the Antichrist, it's a pure demonic bloodline. So can, can, you, 
Can you build on that a little bit, um, Tammy? Yeah, yeah. If, if, let me just in, I'll just interject for a second. So here, I want to. I'll just break this down, like on, because um, I had some of the um, Find Jonah guys and some of the Let's Find Jonah guys asked me at one time. Sometimes when I talk, they said, "Could you, you know, for the layman's, could you break that down?" And so we talked about that, and I said, "Sure." So what what that kind of means? Here's a good analogy. There's there's people that like to have a pure breaded um, like giant poodle okay <laughs> so they and so again there aren't those kind of people they are not willing to go to your you know local um you know uh people rescue down the street and go pick up any mutt okay they're just not willing to and people and it's amazing these pure breaded poodles they want to know i want to know the grandparent the, the parents or grandparents they want to know the long line they have to be purple ribbon Pit bulls, the same thing, got to come from a long line of purple ribbon dogs. They mm. want to make sure they're what? Purebreds. So if and we do with horses too, horse, horse breeders, mm. they want to make sure they're bred from the pure blooded, you know, lineage of those horses because they're what? Stronger horses, they believe, right? Mm. And they have better what? Genetics, okay, is what they believe. Isn't that true? So they don't want to mutt. So these these people's is I mean I'm just telling you, this is not what Tammy believes this is what I understand that these people believe okay mm -hmm. so this isn't Tammy coming up with something pulling it out of her ear you know what I mean drinking some Kool Aid and um, so this is what these I've, I've, people I've seen your ear I've seen your ear it's not big enough to pull that out of no yeah. small matter of fact and yeah. I'm not even a Kool Aid drinker so anyway <laughs> um, so <laughs> so with that said so these people are are looking to they're they're following. They're, these people kept their bloodlines pure. I mean, let's face it. You, I mean, it doesn't take any goofball to go back and look at the, um, at, at, like, let's say, the my relatives all the way back to Habsburgs on one side. I mean, look at the Habsburgs. These guys had genetic defects, okay? They're supposed to be purebreds, okay? But they married their brother, sister's cousin's relative's dog, okay? And that's me making fun of them. Um, but they did. They, they, married, they married their first cousins and there was a jaw defect because they did this for what? 700 years. Because for why? They wanted to keep the bloodline pure. So, and even, they would even marry into another what? Pure bloods that were over here. And what were these guys? Let's say they married into your house of Castile, the Spanish house. Well, these guys did exactly the same thing. The house of Whittlesback, the German house, okay? The, I mean, I could, the house of Saxe Coburg Gotha did the same thing, which are the Windsors, did the exact same thing. House of Bourbon, I could go on. The Russian house of the Romanovs, the ex I'm, naming, I'm naming quite a few on purpose to show that, because I can, this is, this is proven, this is not, again, Tammy pulling something out of her ear. These are proven facts. You can even look it up on Wikipedia if you needed to. These, they, they actually married their relative, their first cousin, to keep the blood lines pure because it was important to them. But who did they also serve? They served Luciferians. They, they, they sued, I'm sorry, they, sued, they served Lucifer as Luciferians. People would be like, no, 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 they're Roman Catholic. That guy over, and that one over there, they were like, they were, they were Lutheranites. And it's like, no, no, no. But at the end of the day, because they were all in what secret societies? They were all Templars. They were all Knights of Malta. So they had a front, the, the, and the Anglican Church of England. So, well, heck, my goodness, you go back and you say, well, really, you were serving Christ? And why did you guys, why did, why did the first queen of England, why did she have John Dee in her background, who was a sorcerer doing black magic? Last time I checked, he wasn't serving Jesus Christ. Just saying. So um, that kind of, so that whole baloney kind of falls away when you kind of find out that's what they were really doing behind the scenes. They were really, it's just a cover is what it was because they were really all had, were all in these secret societies and these secret, you know, uh, practicing this Luciferian religion. And they were all about keeping these lineages pure and they've tracked them for decades. So here we are, fast forward. I have this in my own family is what it is. I have, there's, you know, I have this side on my mother's, mother's side of the family that were, that I've known since I was four, that were from the house of Bourbon, Habsburg Lorraine. And then on the other side, um, uh, I find out in this case, 
that my on my father's side, the Smith sides were really the Smith Sinclairs, and they. I, I, I knew they owned oil company, but we were never told what the name of the oil. I didn't know it was Sinclair Oil until it finally, I had a relative come forward and they finally said yes. And your grandfather was a Knights Templar. And my dad said, oh my gosh, I knew he had a Masonic funeral, but I didn't understand why that was. And so you start to learn these things about your own family. And, but again, the people, the powers that be already knew this, they were tracking us. So then you go to the other side and you got the cozy and Van Dunes on my grandfather, my mother's father's side. And so, and within that, there's a whole book and these guys, guess what's in this book that they started the West East India company. Well, that was the Illuminati. It was the original Illuminati. They were the first global corporation on the globe. OK, it's in a family book. I, if I had to prove it, I mean, I can do that. So again, so and again, my sister and sorry, if she ever hears this, I have to I have to admit it. She married into what another bloodline person. So a Cinder Cone Bauer. And they are they are also related to these people that are that are uh, the Murray's who were her father, her grandfather was, they were De Beers that go into the house of Anjo. So his first, my brother-in-law's first wife was house of bourbon, just like my sister. So again, they're keep shows right there. They're keeping the bloodlines. They're marrying into their own to people that are, you know, really long, long lost relatives, the reef and shy Bedbergs. They were married into the Habsburgs too. So mm -hmm. it's just into the Belgium house. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm really, I'm almost going overboard mm -hmm. because I want people to see like, Gosh, that's just in my own family. How about all of your families out there, people that could be bloodline people? Jody, I think um, before the show, wasn't that kind of mentioned? Do you want to elaborate on something you learned? Well, I'm finding out that we had family who were uh, who were involved in Satanism and uh, eventually gave their heart to Jesus Christ, and the Satanists tried to curse them. And I thought it was just something my mom said when she divorced my dad. <laughs> And now we're finding out that it was a fact and yeah. uh, and, and a lot of stuff. And I'm learning more and more and more about relatives who were in the CIA before it was the CIA um, and, mm. and a whole bunch of other stuff. They were in the OSS, it's called. And um, yeah, so now I'm learning <laughs> stuff and we're starting to see that there may be some uh, bloodline coming down through the Italian side. So, um, yeah, we like our pizza and our pasta, but we don't want to move. <laughs> I, I, wonder, I wonder if this is why Jesus, you know, told us not to concern ourselves with these genealogies. Yeah. You yes. Know, but to, but well, to look. He, he changed it too, didn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we, we become, when we're, we do the new covenant, we become an adopted son of God. He did. With Christ being our brother, and now we're of His lineage. Amen. Our, our lineage don't matter anymore. Right. And, you know, and I think that's why the evil ones are trying to keep this lineage. And you know that there's a yes. big talk about you should be proud of your lineage. Yeah. You should be concerned right. about it. Yeah. because that is truly antichrist. If you want to talk about it, mm -hmm. uh, we should. We're not supposed to even worry about it because He tells us we're mm -hmm. going to be in His house, part of His family. We become mm -hmm. part of his lineage by adoption. It doesn't matter what our tribes are here on earth anymore. And mm -hmm. I think right. that's what he had planned. When the tribes were scattered, it didn't matter anymore. Right. It's just as long as we know who Christ is and become part of his family, uh, right. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. His and, blood, and family blood that matters. And we know, you just mentioned it before, Rick, right. we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the yeah. word of our testimony. But it also says, and they loved not uh, their lives unto death. I there looked you it go. Up. And, and right. what did Jesus die for? Hebrews in uh, the second chapter, 14th and 15th, says he gave his life. He died, I'm paraphrasing, so that we wouldn't be in fear of death. You know, so his, his blood is what is going to take us over. But we have to stop being in fear. Uh, right. We have to stop um, walking in a, a lack of authority. We have to start armoring up. And, like, we're learning this stuff because... Uh, we know that Satan is, he's a, he's a creep. He likes to get technical on the law, on different, <laughs> you know, on the word. He knows the word and he yep. knows the yep. law. So he'll go to God and say, uh, your guy, Job, you know, he might be so wonderful, <laughs> but there's a little bit of fear in there. So can I attack him? You know, so yeah. Yeah, this is critical. why, yeah, this is why we're paying attention 
to what he may be going after. So we can strategically do like uh, like uh, Jim was saying, we are concentrating on the right thing and, and undoing what Amen. they're saying. Right. If, and if I may interject, um, yeah. so what you just said, Jody, about that, that going after, you know, again, like it's, it's the right and what Jim is saying that we are adopted into the body of Christ, into him, into his line, his bloodline, because that's right, because he also birthed out his bloodline, too, is what he did. Mm -hmm. And so with that said, I mean, uh, again, wanted to reiterate. So, um, I mean, the enemy or the opposing side is trying to create like what we are all talking about this, this, uh, you know, 13th, 14th bloodline, they're trying to create the Antichrist. Yeah. And so, and again, they're building um, um, an army is what they're trying to do. And it's called the Black Awakening. Um, that they're, and it's, it's again, it's, it's, which is why they take, I want to go into why they take these children also, okay? And hey, hey, why Timmy, it was so... Tammy, Tammy, I just, I want to make it very clear to people because I don't know if we've just come right out and said it or not, but you and your son were actually targets. Yes. I just I just want to make everybody aware of that. They were actually targets, and I know you're going to get, so go ahead. Right. So, and it goes, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, so we were, we were targeted, and that is something, too, that's been, like, uh, with teams, like, we're still working on, um, I mean, all of those different avenues and levels, but at the at the end of the day, it does go into these bloodline uh, reasoning for the targeting because they spent millions to get my son. Um, I mean, they could have like got from what I'm going to quote one of the spec op guys. They said, you know what? There's I mean, they spent way too much money to get your son. So that was a tell all tell all. It was a bloodline case that we were targeted. Um, I even in the State Department, you know, literally say, you know, you were targeted, but do you know why? And at the time I didn't. Um, and, but this is, so now I've learned over the years that they, I've learned that this is why. And they said, hey, you know, they could have got a child like Jonah that looked like Jonah, 30 Jonas, 30, paying $30,000 a boy 30 times over is what they explained to me. So that's why too, they said, so you guys were targeted, they specifically wanted this child because he comes from these, they call them, they, they call it kind of Merovingian families. And even, uh, I even talked to a survivor recently who's a pretty high level survivor um, and a uh, lot of similar connections, works with certain um, federal people. And again, it is a certain Merovingian bloodline that goes into called the hierarchy Children that are kidnapped at that level, different, because there is different levels. I want to make sure everybody knows that there is a level that you, that certain children, a mid-level, that they can be kidnapped in. That means they're going to be groomed like mine for, you know, some nefarious reason. Uh, there's another level they get kidnapped into to be used in a sex, just a sex uh, pornography ring. Another level is to be kidnapped for uh, or trafficked for... Um, you know, for adrenochrome, uh, you know, body harvesting, and also for diamonds, they turn them into diamonds. And so that's a whole nother, or, or even gulags, okay, they put them in workhouses, gulags, in different parts of the country. So, but, cert, but the ones that are taken, that are targeted for the hierarchy, are lineage children, like Jonah. And those are the hardest ones to come out. And Jonah's even a, in a level of, they call it like Merovingian families because of those certain bloodlines I just mentioned. Because again, they're, the, they're looking for um, to build this Antichrist and he's not the Antichrist. I'm going to make sure I mention that for anybody who wants to put that out there. Um, this is not that. This is, again, some nefarious position um, that they take these children for, like in that, you know, Council of 13, those kind of positions in secret secret positions and um like your pindar things like that that are generational in our family bloodlines is what i discovered okay so it's a very high level most children that ha are kidnapped or um or i would say that are taken into that a lot of them are adopted into that they do a black market adoption is what they do to those children which is what happened to jonah and well, they have to do that because the families that Normally, you're supposed to hand your children, your child over, and be very happy about it because you're in the system. I'm not 
I have a family. It's a cult family that we call non-cult because I, we we were like considered what they call wild grapes. We broke away somehow. However, my mom's father was CIA. He was connected to Jack Ruby. He was the handler of Jack Ruby, so he was part of the Chicago uh, outfit, and they were all one at that time with the Kennedy's assassination. So. When you have, and his father was OSS, and his cover was working at the post office and all this stuff, and in the film industry. So again, it's these are families that the CIA and the Merovingian family, from what I understand, they they incorporated all those Merovingian families in those intelligent world uh, three letter agencies, the CIA, MI5, all that. That's it's really incorporated, and they made a deal. So all those families are going to be um, their children are going to be groomed to be in hierarchy positions, is what it is. So that's so again with Jonah, that part of my declaration and my goal was to break off all of those contracts in that hierarchy, those declarations, those documents that were signed long ago or the you know the betrothal of of my grandmother a, a contract that was made that goes down in our family lines um those kind of contracts that i can't if i wanted to go to france and go cancel them out i couldn't because i have family that won't tell me where they are or what they are and um are hiding them basically from me so on purpose and um and so so you know what at the end of the day i'm like but guess who has the power to cancel them all god does Amen. So that's where I said, you know what, God, I'm going to go to you because you, I can come to you and I can sit at your feet and through the power of Jesus Christ and I can ask you, because you know where they all are, to cancel all of those contracts on Amen. behalf of my family lines yes. and all those generational curses yes. and you can break this off of Jonah. Mm -hmm. You can do this and bring him out. Yeah. Awesome stuff. That was, yeah. Well, you brought that full circle to you because we've talked about, you know, the who's and what what they've done, but how they've done it is contract. And, and I, I'm going to say this not to be pushing anything or, or to, to puff anybody's head, but it literally brings me back immediately to, to mind Jim's book, The Contract in Eden. And, and so you brought it full circle back to that contract in Eden. Those contracts are mm. still are what uh, are what give them the power to do the give the who that you've described the power to do the what that you have described mm -hmm. and uh, uh, by going to one who is a of a and Jody talked about Satan knows the law and he and he looks for those finer points of it. but when you go to the one who was the original lawgiver Amen. Uh, and you rescind uh, your your name from any of those contracts. Mm -hmm. It uh, those contracts are more mm -hmm. broke than the original Ten Commandments. <laughs> amen, mm -hmm. amen. And you, you know what I really find fascinating about about Tammy's situation? She was a target way before she even had Jonah, mm -hmm. like you know, conceived Jonah, and and that that's like mind blowing. I can't even think you know you, you can't even like uh wrap your mind around that so um wow anyway yeah i i had i actually had um a at my early 20s which which the organizations and teams i've um, been a client of explained they said well i was kidnapped in my early 20s and i was missing for like two months and i was i was i was in the industry and film industry um and yeah, so that turned out to be connected to to what happened to Jonah and to what happened to us in this modern modern day is what crazy. it was. Yeah, so I was going to be trafficked, and I I had a supernatural deliverance, which was part of how I got into women's ministry. It was actually my testimony. There's people out there if they ever heard this, they would probably remember my testimony. I had like literally, a, like I mean, she it was I I literally literally believe she was an angel. Um, that literally helped deliver me out, and that's why that's how I got out. Because it was it was absolutely supernatural how I got out of that situation. And I mean, cor correct me if I'm wrong, Tammy, but even like Jonah's biological father would have had to been bloodline, right, in order for mm -hmm. the for all this to to happen. So right. So the targeting <laughs> even happened then. 
Right. It was somebody I knew. That's like crazy. we were, yeah, we were childhood. Um, his, his, the real person. We were childhood. Uh, we, we were like friends, and uh, wow. Um, and um, he is somebody. His family even worked for uh, my some of my my dad's family. I'm just going to put it that way. We're kind of, and again, we have some. He, it's it's gotten legal with him. Um, he was helping in the beginning against the the fake dad Sullivan guy, and his because there was there was a group of people that kidnapped Jonah and the Brian Sullivan guy who was the fake dad with a transgender man. I'm going to name them just because I want people to understand the difference that there's this, that. So yeah, it was, it was a group. There was a, a man who was a transgender man named Dennis Nolan, who played uh, Denise Glazer. Two people played Denise Glazer. And um, and then another person played a younger one played Denise Glazer, and a person uh, that they their alias they used was Sarah Francis, and that was a Jacqueline Abram Sutton is the name of that person, and another transgender man named uh, he went by a woman's name Sandy Short, but his name was Alexander Short from Connecticut, by the way, and so <laughs> he uh, and again so you had people across the United States. This is a this was a web weavers web of people this was wow. a group of people that did this that were handlers that were they were these people are generational doing this like for instance the we've learned that the dennis nolan family they were out of uh had a they had these guys were doing chicken farming out of the menji minnesota had another location moving children that were orphans um from new mexico down to mexico and, you know, you had ministries that they were giving to these um, orphanages down in Mexico, but they were really trafficking children. So these guys had a history in doing this. Let me tell you, they sure did. And they're bloodline people, too. I mean, Clarks, the Coopers. It was a big it was a big group of people that were involved working with all the officials in California, you know, to that help got people to, to do them favors in Alabama, North Carolina, you know, and other places. They've got people everywhere. I'm just I'm just amazed to you know Tammy that you even you know trust anybody anymore because yeah. uh, yeah, because it, it, it you know uh, that's that's one of the most fascinating things about you when 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 we met you know we got to see you look into your eyes and actually see who you are and meet you and get to know you and so you know I'm just blown away that you still have humor. You can still laugh, you can you can still trust. Those, I mean, that to me, God has done immaculate things with you. Just 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 that you could do those things, and and I mean, I would feel like everything in my life was literally planned or or pre, you know, prepared for a particular thing to you know because. I mean, do, do you feel like people have been planted in your life since the time you were a kid in order for yes. all these things to manifest? This is crazy. Yep. Yeah, I absolutely do. And it's interesting talking to um, other survivors uh, that are from the hierarchy level and um, that <laughs> it's so weird. It, it gets more weirder for me to get identical stories. And um, wow. one I just talked to, yeah, they had a school teacher that was really part of their programming that they had no idea and they went to later on went to you know visit like their their school teacher to show their first child to them and the child kind of freaked out because they were part of a ritual and so here I am I have all of a sudden these people planted in my life that a friend that I thought and I met in ministry um, at a horizon church and I thought you know we became friends the whole entire time she was planted in she was to lure me over to this morning star church where uh, I had these recruiters that were part of the part of a big ring, part of the trafficking of Jonah, and um, and these are guys were they were in the Eastern Star, <laughs> they were Masonic women, and then the, the the woman who was in the church, she was she was a CPS worker the entire time, but she was taken from her parents, her real mother and father stolen, and adopted out to this these this random people and groomed to be a CPS worker. Just to give you an example, you can't make it up, can you? You can't no, even make can't it up. Make, I mean, no. It's like so it's stranger than fiction, they say. Yeah. Well oh, and that's just name and just this is the hard part, is that's only naming one out of it came I had all the I had I had so many people I thought were my friends that I was surrounded I was surrounded by these people, literally wow. not knowing it and uh 
I mean, I have and then then there's there's family too. There's family involved too. I mean, there's certain family, not all family. Okay, I want to make sure I, I state that, and I'm going to be very careful about. I'm not going to go into who tonight, but um, there is family, and that are absolutely. They were they were they were literally right there. They helped the other side. I mean, they literally helped the other side. I mean, point blank. Let me tell you, and um, it's uh, it's so hurtful. And again, wow. they do it. But part of it is to is to traumatize you anyway. So they they have a they they're doing it on purpose. It's part of to um, hoping to cause uh, maybe they're causing they hope to cause some some way to get somebody near you to handle you to do something because they want to be they want to traumatize you. They want to cause betrayal because they all practice that amongst each other. So there is no loyalty among real satanist okay there just isn't so um there's no love there there's no there's none of that it's all that everything is about image and power and money and money is their god and his name is lucifer so so with that said isn't that the load they put on is is like you just talked about after a while as you learn more it's like I guess everything's planned for me, so why bother to try to change? Yeah. I guess I'll just go right. along with it, and I'll, they'll treat me fine, and, and I'll come out ahead at the end. Is that really not probably the reason they do all this is is so well structured and planned that people feel like, well, there's no way out. There's no use of fighting it. Uh, like they say, you can't fight, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, against uh, you know Wall Street, or you can't fight against the uh, the city commission type of idea. And that's, I think that's what they've built is people feel that there is no way out. And I guess that's why hopefully they can all get to know Christ because there definitely is a way out. But, I, you know, from hearing you explain and hearing others explain, uh, they do put on that position to where you have no place to turn. Yep. Um, like you just said, there is no yep. help. When you tried to help, it was mm-hmm. just you were slam dunk. So it's. I think most people probably say, you know what? Uh, I guess it ain't worth it. We'll just we'll just go ahead along with the the plan. True. I I do believe that there 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 is a there is a lot of um, um, many of them have no hope. Okay, and and, um, and you know what I believe that um, Christ has given me is he's I've held on to this thing called hope, and he's given me hope. And um, and there is the end of the day. I think that if any, I, I, I want to be able to express to so many of them that I, that I, and I talk to a lot of different ones from different parts of the world and I tell them, look, that's the only way out because the end of the day when this life is over, you know, that's, that's, that's where you want to be. And that's where their real hope is. Even if we make it in out of this life or not, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, we, we, we mm-hmm. get out of this, this, uh, you know, body suit we're in at the end of the day, that's, that's, what's going to matter. And, that's the hope we have is that's really our home. That's the next, the real, the real home it says, is this, is, is our heavenly home. And so, but at the same time too, I still got to believe. And I, I tell a lot of different ones. I still got to believe for that. God didn't take me to, um, to the edge of this cliff and just to drop me off cliff, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and, and I have been through so much betrayal. I will tell you, it just happened to me. I'm not going to go down that road tonight, but I have some, it's very painful and some people that I, and families that I absolutely, I mean, I still just absolutely love them dearly. I will tell you. And it's so painful for me. Um, but I cannot look back. I cannot because they made a decision and they're, they're being part of the system or they chose money, power, they got blackmailed. It's a, it's a, it's a myriad of things. Okay. And that, but they made those choices. And so, um, I chose to love them and think and, and thought, Hey, we're in this together and they chose what they chose. So I got to move on and you know what? I got to just go, okay, God, um, you know what? You're closing a door and this is how I have to, this is literally what he gives me. Okay. That I, I, and I could, I could just fall over and give up and just be like, join the system and just be like, you know what I mean? And be one of them. But there's something in me that I can't, I can't do that. I just can't. I just, I, I'm just, I just, um, at the, I mean, cause this is, there's this, I just know that I know that, you know, um, my heavenly father is, is the way out If nothing else happens this life. I just know, okay, well, I tried and I got to, I got to, I got to, 
I had died trying otherwise, that old stupid saying, but I don't believe I'm going to die. Try, I, don't, I believe I'm going to do it. And I, I really do believe I'm going to do it. I don't know how, I don't know how God's going to do it, but he told me he's going to do it. I was given even a prophecy that he's going to do this. And so I'm like, I'm hanging on to that for dear life. And so every time the enemy knocks me down and, you know, and sends another one to betray me, betray me, betray me, you know, case getting blown away, shut down, somebody, they kill people that are leaders that, you know, give that I have hope that are going to open the case. I've had so many people get killed and die and this is not even funny, not to scare you guys, but it's, that's the fact. It's true. But I still got it. I go, okay, you know what? God keeps, he gives me, I notice he, he opened the door with better people, with somebody better. So I have that hope and I trust him. And that's why it was like, I can't, it was so, I can't even explain. It was Holy Spirit. Like when Randy was talking at that event and I already had an event, I already had some other people that were doing some other legal stuff with me and some other place. And I shut it down and the Holy Spirit was like, nope. I'm like, and they're like, what are you doing? They're like, Tammy, what are you doing? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm supposed to wait. You guys, let me tell you, they were mad. They were, they were not. They were really mad. They're really irritated with me. And they're like, what do you mean? You got to wait. You got to get this done. We're all sitting. We've done all this, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I know, I know. I just got to wait. And so, and I knew. And then, then it came down to, no, nah, this is not it. Not it, man. Nope. And then I, I'll never forget. It was like, again, I had, I'm like, okay, God, where, where am I going next? Who, where, what, you know? And I had to go to the, I, all of a sudden I'm at this, I'm at this event and Randy's there and I'm some, the Holy Spirit's like, like on the shoulder, that's it. This is it. This is it. And it was just like, I felt like something yanked me out of my chair. I even had a, sec my security guy was like, where are you going? Chase is chasing me. And I had another person that was chasing me like, what are you doing? Where are you going? And so, but it was a knowing it was, a, it was a literally being like led Holy spirit. So, and then it was, I just knew then meeting all of you. I don't know why I just, I just knew, I just knew that I knew that I knew. And the one thing too, and even that I just knew it was just, it was, it was again, if I have to trust myself with people and things, oh my gosh, I'll, um, I'll, something will happen to me. <laughs> okay. So I can't. So, and yes, I have to take chances. Yes, I have. I, I, um, I have done that and I've been burned. I was recently burned and, uh, uh, recently burned more than once <laughs> and um, and it's so painful but what I even said to Randy and Rob without without you know saying names that what God did show me is that you know what guess what it wasn't all for naught I you learned I wanted you to learn things and you learned a lot from those people mm -hmm. and um, you so that's what I gave you out of that and you had to go there to learn X Y and Z because of the level of things you wouldn't have known that without being there as painful as that was. Mm -hmm. yep. Wow. So God turned it around for me. He did a Jeremiah 29, 11 on for that, you know, and that's what I feel like this is. And I love your spirit. And that spirit is in your son. So. Yes. It is. Amen. It is. Yeah. Amen. Which, which is one thing I want to be able to, um, I want to be a theme an ongoing theme that I'm asking everybody to join in in partnership with me and is to, is calling the mind of Christ for Jonah. Mm -hmm. So I had, I had a survivor and some others that are saying, Hey, because the goal there is, is that after I did this baptism, I broke off all those contracts. I made a new mm -hmm. covenant with Christ not just on my behalf, but on Jonah's behalf, because I have that authority and I did it. And I have the authority. They don't have any more authority over him. And so here I am, you know, you know, I'm pulling out of Babylon. Okay. We're all pulling out. Lift off. Here we go. <laughs> right. And, uh, and here we are in the ethereal, right? We're going after it, calling the mind of Christ for Jonah to snap out of that programming and but to be, to remember Remember me teaching him to put the whole armor of God on as a child to bring back, flush back all those memories of when we used to pray together. And I know, I know that I know that I know. He used to tell me that um, the, the, the man with the, he said, my, my, the man with the blue, he, he was trying to, with his arm, his hand going back and forth across his chest sideways, tell me he got blue coat on. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's talking. I knew he was talking about Jesus. He was talking to him. And so I'm like, oh my gosh. So he knows He's met him. So calling that forward, that memory, and for him to be able to 
visit Jesus, visit him and help him break through mm -hmm. and to be able to help others to do the same, break that trance, break that programming. Mm -hmm. And so, and to, and to be, to be open that door. Now he's at a pretty high level. So that means God's going to have to put together his, his, uh, God super soldiers of militant spec ops be, I don't know how he's going to do it, but on the other side, I don't know. Well, Tammy, let, 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 let me uh, say this is <clears throat> you got to remember that now that those contracts, you, you know, you've, you rescinded all that. That's mm -hmm. all done. And you've got a new covenant. Yep. You see when these evil folks now do these things, see, before, so this is why the fallen ones want the contracts is because they can stand back kind of in kind of like a Job thing. Say, well, we see God, they, they chose to contract. It yep. was their choice. You see, here's what's different now. Now that you've done this, uh, now it's everything they do, it's a testimony directly against them. Yes. In God's eyes. And so now they're going to be more careful. And, and they're going to start realizing that, whoops, uh, we don't have a contract anymore. We have no agreement. Now when we do this, we really are truly coming against God's, uh, God's uh, ordinances, God's law, and against God Almighty himself. Because now... We're picking on his children, mm -hmm. his adopted children, his real family, uh, and brothers to Christ. Uh, you know this, and you know brothers and sisters to Christ. I should say. So you see, now the the playing field has changed, and they know that. That's what we call about the ripple in the spirit. They know that now. They'll be much more careful, and mm -hmm. but they're going to continually try to recontract, guaranteed. Yes. Because now they have nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've got to throw something in right quick uh, before you Go jump in, Rick. Go for it. You know, we, we've gone from, from uh, introductions to being informative to some uh, your jaw hitting your chest information. <laughs> uh, mind blown, so much information. Uh, uh, talking about... Uh, you know, warriors and who we are in Christ and how and T who T is in Christ. But for those who are listening, you just heard Tammy give us some marching orders. You just heard her say how we are to pray for Jonah, who mm -hmm. is still in the clutches of the evil one, and that we are to bring up the mind of Christ in him and bring back to his memory those things his mother taught him and to bring him up to a place where he where he will, uh, even of his own accord, walk out. Deliverance. Amen. Deliverance. Yeah. Deliverance. Amen. Deliverance. Deliverance. You, heard, you heard the call, warriors. Yeah. What will you do with it? You'll answer for how you how you respond to that call. Amen. Yeah. If I might, if I might share an illustration that just right. came to my mind, you know, because I, I, I'm kind of like a vision guy, right? You know, so this illustration that came to my mind, it, you know, it's, it's, this is similar to when like the Philistines would steal the Ark of the Covenant and they would take it into their camp. Right. And, and, you know, uh, for a while they, maybe they were, they were just, you know, ecstatic about having the Ark of the Covenant there. But once the curse fell on them and they began to get tumors and all kinds of you know ailments right <laughs> right know, now they want to return suddenly it's oh well, let's get this <laughs> thing out of here let's return that that's the prayer i have for jonah oh okay Amen. i'm gonna they, second that one yeah I, I'm, because, that. I'm in agreement because Very i'm sweet. telling you i'm telling you they mm -hmm. they have a hot potato remember that game hot potato <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> they've got a hot potato in their camp and, yeah, and I mean that's that's going to be big trouble for them. So, you know, and that that potato needs to be protected. I was yes. just thinking because anything that happens to that potato, they will be responsible. Like I just said, the mm -hmm. testimonies upon their shoulders now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And eventually, the Ark of the Covenant took down Dagon. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yes, yes, right it. off, ends right off. That's what <laughs> yep. Yes, it did. Yeah. 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 So, amen. Do, so, so if you guys, if you guys who are watching would just hang in there for just another minute, when we're done here, we're gonna we're gonna close in prayer because I think it's a good time. I don't know how long we've gone. Yep. I'm not even paying attention, but <laughs> I think we broke a record, Randy. 
We broke a record. <laughs> no, not yet. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you hang on, right after this, you're going to see the entire tsunami uh, declaration. And I would encourage you all to listen word for word because what Tammy does is not just going to send, you know, we've been saying ripples through the spirit. It's going to devastate the spirit. It's a frequency of destruction to mm -hmm. the spirit realm, okay, to the to the the dark spirit realm. Mm -hmm. um, so, <clears throat> so hang in there just just a minute. I'm gonna ask our our poet brother. I always ask him to close in prayer. I was gonna do it myself, but God just said God just said you got to ask Randy to close tonight. <laughs> yes. So so Randy, brother, would you please close us in in prayer? I will. Father, we just come before you having heard so much information and what do we do with it? How do we react? How do we respond? And these words come to mind that you gave me long ago. As I lie in bed, as the sun begins the day, too afraid to rise and too cynical to pray, the fabric of my world is torn and frayed. Can this be a day that God has made? Betting with tomorrow, the odds become impossible. Finding peace in the world we live in is not plausible. Expecting more than yesterday is just improbable. Problems mounting cannot be drowned. They are not soluble. Satan's words hang in my head with constant accusation. The church is hurting and the spirit has left the, the congregation. Oh, we all lie in our beds and fear the day. It is a world and expectation of destruction of our comforts while, while our souls cry for emancipation. What we thought would set us free has rather made us enslaved, and rather than flee the game, we sit with Satan and we say, deal me another hand, for I will satisfy that for which I crave. And so the odds continue to build as the church sits down to play. And now it has come to this, that we must live in fear ignoring the call that comes from God, wanting us to draw near. Can we even hear the call when it is ourselves that we hold dear? And impossible to change it all are the only words we hear. But these words are lies and not from God, but from the enemy. Jesus died, was crucified, and he has won the victory. Not a victory for himself, but for all mankind, including me. And impossible is overcome through the Christ of Calvary. Impossible is where God specializes, and while Satan continually emphasizes that our hearts are black and he criticizes, God is waiting, his forgiveness revitalizes, and nothing is too difficult for the God of all creation. Nothing is impossible for the God who made presentation of his love, which cost his son, given without hesitation. I will run to him because it's time to live without trepidation and to conquer the impossible is simple to achieve it can be done by anyone who will face it on their knees and no longer will i lie in bed afraid the day to see for now god is my shield my hope my victory and father i pray that you will be our shield our hope our victory and we will rejoice together brothers and sisters when we see jonah in the arms of his mother once again and we call it to be in Jesus' name in whom all authority in heaven and earth was given. And it's in his name and through the agency that he gave us in his name that we pray these things. Amen. 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 So it shall be. Amen. So it shall be. In Christ's name, it so Amen. shall it be. So i got to say this before I say our tagline to go out here, Randy. You look in the mirror and you see just a little ant. You see yourself as so insignificant. But let me tell you something. When the Lord looks upon you, he sees a beautiful songbird. Because that's Amen. what you are. You're a beautiful yeah. songbird. And when you sing your song, brother, like you just did right there, it, you, mm -hmm. you just, things happen in creation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Amen. That's so true. Agree with that, too. <laughs> so everything we do here mm -hmm. at the C2K Report, it's all about the blood. Amen. Amen. Father God, I just, I, I, I'm coming to you today um, present 
here, and I want to do this new covenant. I'm here to do a new covenant with you. I'm doing this on behalf of my son, Jonah Earl, who's a house of grief, member of the Reef family. I, Tammy Cherie, a member of the Reef family, come to you and I repent of all my sin and transgressions. I know that Jesus, Yahshua, is the son of the living God. I know that Jesus, Yahshua, came to die for my sin and transgressions and to give me the ability to have everlasting life. I accept Jesus, Yahshua, as my Savior and that he has paid for all my sin and transgressions. I now desire to be baptized in his name and become a son of God. And I also request, Father God, that this is also done on the behalf of my own child, Joan Earl, member of the Reed family. As I am his natural mother, I ask you that you bestow upon me that authority, um, as, if, as if he's here, God, that this, this would reverberate all the way into the spirit, that he would feel it wherever he is, whatever part of the earth yes, he is, you yes, know, Lord. you know where he is, that he, you know, you've given him that gift that he can see, that he can hear. You've made him a prophet, that you would allow him to see the vision of me here, right now, Jesus' name, as I stand before you, Father God. And I ask that you cover this with the blood of Christ. Yes, Lord. And I now am going to ask Father God, I have an affidavit of declaration and release that I want to say before you today also. For me, Tammy Cherie, and Jonah Earl of House of Reef, and my family, we serve God, Yahshua, the one and only true Ecclesian. We serve only the living God, God Yahshua, the creator of the universe, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his only God, Son, Jesus, Yahshua, the Christ, as surely as he lives. In the presence of God, Yahshua, I, Tammy Sheree, and on behalf of my son, John Earl, members of the house of grief, and adopted sons of God, by immersion, baptism, as according to Matthew 7, 28-29, John 1, 12 to 14, Romans 8, 12 through 17, and Mark 16, 14 through 16, have bestowed authority to declare, release, and rescind participation of all past ceremonies, sacrifices, procedures, contracts, agreements, offices, positions, obligations, and accountabilities that are a violation of God's, Yahshua's laws, contrary to God's, Yahshua's creation promote harm, evil, and iniquities that involve myself or my offspring that are not of the age of accountability. I have repented of all transgressions, sins, and iniquities today, as according to God, Yahshua's word, and have been forgiven and released from them. And I ask this too on behalf of my own child, Jonah Earl, a member of the Reed family. I have asked for forgiveness of my actions and God, Yeshua, and his only begotten Son, Jesus Yeshua, the Christ, has forgiven me. My body, spirit, and soul has now become one through the blood of Jesus the Christ, Yahshua the Yamsian, and now hold the gift of the Holy Spirit. I, Tammy Sheree, House of Reef, and on behalf of my son, Jonah Earl, House of Reef, declare the following of all things that are prior to my immersion, baptism, and becoming an adopted son of God, Yahweh. I repent abdicate, renounce, and resign any and all offices, positions, priesthoods, or any other leadership positions and obligations connected to the brotherhood. I repent and rescind in my signature, autograph on any and all documents, contracts, and agreements that are a violation of God, Yahshua's laws contrary to God, Yahshua's creation that promote evil or harm and iniquities. I rescind my participation from any and all ceremonies, sacrifices, procedures, contracts, and agreements that are a violation of God, Yahweh's laws, contrary to God, 
natural laws of creation that promote evil or, or, or harm or iniquities. I reject any and all claims on me and my family from past lineage, genealogy, historical agreements, or heirship bound by the Luciferian Brotherhood and bound by any and all Vatican Luciferian blood ties and blood oaths. The only exception to any and all heritage land claims or historical agreements to this new covenant under God, Yahuwah, are those that were God the Creator given, yes. gifts that were bestowed on my family by God the Father himself yes. that the enemy has stolen under Jesus. Romans 10. I release any and all financial and land claims from past lineage, genealogy, historical agreements, or airship bound by the Luciferian Brotherhood monarchs and bound by the Roman Catholic Vatican Luciferian blood ties and blood oaths. The only exception, once again, to any and all heritage land claims or historical agreements to this new covenant under God, Yahuwah, are those that were God the Creator given. Gifts that were stolen, but gifts that were bestowed on my family by only God the Father himself that the enemy has stolen under Romans 10. I release any and all claims on any offices, positions, priesthoods, or any leadership positions and obligations under the Luciferian Brotherhood. I release any and all claims from the prophets, Results or benefits from all ceremonies, sacrifices, procedures, contracts, and agreements that are a violation of God, who is laws, and contrary to God, who is creation. The following is also done for my son, Jonah Earl, a member of the Reed family, who is protected by sanctuary of God, who is authority, because I am his natural mother. I am now an adopted son of God, Yahuwah, under a new covenant. And we now belong to God, Yahuwah, through his covenant as part of his family. For my son, Jonah Earl, House of Grief, I, his mother, Tammy Sheree of House of Grief, declare the following on his behalf. I, Tammy Sheree of the House of Grief, and Jonah Earl of the House of Grief, renounce, rescind all blood ties under the Luciferian Brotherhood, all signatures tied to the Luciferian Brotherhood, and religious systems and spirits, familial blood ties, divorcing all spiritual connections, to Vatican Luciferian system that oversees things on this earth. On my son Jonah's behalf, as he is still of tender age, I have the authority as his natural mother and declare and decree that, the re that he repents, abdicates, renounces, and resigns any and all offices, positions, priesthoods, or other leadership positions and obligations that have bound him through blood, ties, blood oaths under the Luciferian Brotherhood. I decree and declare that he repents and resends his signature, autograph from any and all documents, contracts, and agreements that are a violation of God, Yahuwah's laws, contrary to God's and Yahuwah's creation, or that promotes harm, evil, and iniquities that have blood tied him under the Luciferian Brotherhood. I declare and I decree that he resents his participation from any and all ceremonies, sacrifices, procedures, contracts, and agreements, and promotes any harm, evil, and iniquities that have blood tied him under the Luciferian Brotherhood. I decree and declare that he rejects any and all claims on me and my family from past lineage, genealogy, historical agreements, or heirship that were not not, I say, given from the Father in heaven above. I decree and declare that he release any and all financial claims from the past lineage, genealogy, historical agreements, or heirship that were not God the Father in heaven given. I decree and declare that he releases any and all claims on offices, positions, priesthoods, or any other leadership positions and, and obligations that have blood tied him under blood oaths through the Luciferian Brotherhood. I decree and declare that he release any and all claims from prophets' results or benefits from all ceremonies, sacrifices, procedures, contracts, and agreements that are a violation of God, Yahuwah's laws, contrary to God, Yahuwah's creation. But God, Yahuwah's authority, power and grace. All these actions, declarations, and releases 
are executed on this 20th day of August, Anno Domini 2022, excuse me, 2022, and make sure we have that year correct, um, by myself, Tammy Shui, a member of the House of Reef without the United States. And um, today, at the end of the baptism, I would ask four witnesses to come forward and actually witness and sign this today. I now um, come before you, Father God, and I ask the Holy Spirit to descend upon me to be immersed with baptism today. Father God, I just come to you and I feel a, um, a peace, a peace, and I just thank you for this moment, just, just to be with you, and this moment I just, I just lift up my son Jonah to you, and I had a question asked to me, how do I want to see my son delivered, and I wanted to say to you, as I'm, I'm yours, we are adopted into your family. And I ask that my son be delivered 150%, completely, completely restored. Yes. Restore his soul, his spirit, his mind, his body. Most of all, Father God, I ask that you would, you, that he would be saved, that he would, he would make that choice. He would, want to be your super soldier God and your army and that he would make that choice and that whether I pass away this earth and never see him or whether I see him tomorrow but I know that you made a promise that I've got to stand on today and you said this child's coming out and you gave me a wave and I saw the wave and you told me to name him Jonah years before he was born and you know what I'm going to stand on that and I want to see him delivered with all those children. Isaiah 61, 1, that's the ministry you gave me. To see those bound in those darkest places, to see those chained in those darkest, most depths of depravity come out. And I ask that you would have him be the leader that finds the door in the darkest places, show him where that light is, that his soul and the spirit would get saved and that he would be on that other side, opening that door that would be the floodgates of that wave. That wave looks like a pipeline. It would be thousands, millions, millions, millions of children that are on that other side, coming through that door with him. And Father God, I just ask you that you would show me where to be. Show me where to be. Show me where this Gideon's army. Show them, bring them. Bring the pure hearted. Bring that Joel's army that we would be on the other side of that door waiting. But we aren't just waiting, we're charging in. <laughs> because we're generals, that's what it is. And that's what you said, and I'm going to stand on that today. I'm decreeing it and I'm declaring it because you said so. That's right. You told me this child's going to come out. You named him Jonah for a reason. God, I'm just, I'm going to believe you for your promises that we are the Isaiah 61 one ministry. We are that today in this time and this place. And that we are the chosen ones for this time, just like in Esther, for such a time as this. And we will see it come to fruition. It will happen. That's right. Everything is made new. This is a new covenant. 
And we stand on that belief and we stand just on everything that you hold true for us. And I decree and declare it. And I ask that you would cover everything we said here today, everything I decreed, declared, everything was decreed and declared over my family and myself today, that it be covered by the blood of Christ. Yes. Every doorway that you open in these circumstances with these ministries all coming together partnering, that you would cover all of that with the blood of Christ. That doorway, any doorway that the enemy tries to open, he, they can't open it. And it would be covered by the blood of Christ. It'd be shut so hard. It'd be just completely shut. There's no locks, no windows, no mouse holes to jump out of. Nothing. But it's covered by the blood of Christ. And those doors would be completely shut on the enemy. And I thank you. And I say hallelujah to that today. And I thank you for new beginnings and a new covenant today. I praise you and I thank you. I come before you humbly. Thank you. Amen. Amen. My voice to worship you, oh my.